Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, our uh, uh, monthly webinar from C11 and at the University of Gloucestershire. This is Ali Shabazz. Uh, I'm glad to have uh, uh, to have this started since July, and we have a monthly webinar to bring um, speakers, expert speakers from different uh, sectors, from the industry, from the government, from uh, academ academia. Uh, be before I start to introduce our speaker, I would like to ask uh, my colleague Riel to do some announcement about uh, 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 activities going on uh, within the C11 and the uh, University of Gloucestershire. This is Ali Sherbaz, uh, ASL for uh, Cyber and Technical Computing at the School of Computing and Engineering at the University of Gloucestershire. Riel? Okay, thank you, Ali. And um, for those that don't know me, my name's Rayelle Pentland Smith. I am the uh, Business Development Director for C11, our Cybersecurity and Digital Innovation Center, a uh, part of the University of Gloucestershire, which is located at the uh, Gloucestershire Science and Technology Park out at Berkeley. And I have just a couple of uh, announcements that I'd like to make sure people are aware of some of the activities that are currently underway or coming up or things that both the business community as well as our academic community may be in, interested in. Uh, the first one is to make sure that uh, folks are aware that we've got our skills boot camp graduates um, currently finishing their first skills boot camps with CVs available for employers to examine. Now that's a big sentence and if you haven't heard any of this before it probably doesn't make a lot of sense but we've got some students coming through an intense training program that are now looking to do interviews in the business community. Um, they've got uh, training in the areas of cyber analysis, software engineering and data science. I will put uh, some links in the chat to tell you more about how you might be able to get a hold of some of these CVs or be in touch with some of the students or find out more about these programs that have been um, have been uh, developed through the Institute of Coding along with the University of Gloucestershire. So lots of information there. We've got 60 students. We've had an event just recently with um, a real positive amount of business engagement and we're hoping that we can uh, present these students as a kind of a junior addition to our cyber community and uh, and find opportunities for them to engage. Uh, the second thing I would like to announce is just uh, a few other events coming up. The next one is uh, an apprenticeship apprenticeship week. This is part of the University of Gloucestershire apprenticeship week and we have an event on uh, the 9th of February, virtual event running from two to five. And that will be an opportunity for businesses to find out more about our degree apprenticeships, how to get involved in apprenticeship programs, what the opportunities or what the advantages are as an employer, and also to potential students. I'll put the links again in the chat in just a minute, but that's running as a virtual event on the 9th of February. And again, um, our cyber degree apprenticeship will be one of the opportunities to learn more about that program. Then uh, a further plug for our webinar series. We've got two more webinars uh, coming up that I can tell you a little bit about. Our March webinar is going to highlight um, information around supply chain security. Our speaker is going to be from Accenture uh, Simon Jones, an individual very much involved in the consultancy aspects of information security, regional company, very well established. And then going on from there, our April seminar, webinar, excuse me, will be uh, delivered by Chris Dunning Walton from Sinam. Sinam is a dynamic uh, business and academic association based in the Cheltenham region that is working to bring together both um, organizations and biz and academia to further the interests of the cyber community. So that one's coming up in April. Again, more details. I'll put some links into our cyber into our uh, chat. And then finally, it's just a simple mark. Mark your calendar. We have established some of our our key um, our key topics and themes for our cyber tech symposium. 
which is scheduled for July 7th to be held live at our at our facility at C11 out at Barclay. And we're getting really excited. Our key theme this year is going to be looking at critical infrastructure uh, protection against cyber attacks. So that critical infrastructure themes, and of course we will be uh, underpinning that with lots of discussion about our skills development, pathways development, and um, the, the business insight and academic insight around those topics. So we're hoping that we get lots of involvement, um, both in terms of sponsorship, speakers, and of course um, those that might be interested in attending on the day. That's my list of announcements. I'm hoping I haven't missed anything and I will shut up now. I'll turn off my camera and look forward to hearing what Paul's got to tell us. Thank you very much, Real. Ab absolutely uh, important uh, announcement for us. It's a great effort from C11 and the uh, team at the school as well to do to make this uh, event happen. Uh, let's go back to our main business today. We have a uh, 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 Mr. Paul uh, uh, Tonkins, uh, he's the speaker. Uh, he's going to talk talk about about exporting cybersecurity and um, digital technology with the Department of the International Trade, the benefit and the challenge. I would like to introduce uh, Paul. He has a 30 years experience. Paul is a chartered uh, at uh, uh, at previously at RAF uh, Aerosystem Engineer and since has had more than 30 years of the international sales and marketing of technical solution in aerospace, defense, security, plus some general SME's business consultancy. He is very culturally aware about the trade uh, in all major parts of the globe for small and large companies and opportunity with a strong businesses and engineering management background. He aimed over to keep current both technology and global market trained opportunity and a network to help Midland tech SMEs to gain profitable overseas order in a timely manner. And the, the topic he actually uh, in the region, he's responsible for cybersecurity, 5G smart cities, AI, uh, electronic system, uh, IoT, robotics. Well, it's really relevant to our school, future mobility, med, health tech, biotech, agri-tech, uh, edu edutech, which is education, and uh, finally space tech as well. It's a long experience. We're glad to have you, Paul, today. Uh, uh, bearing in mind, while the head of school is here, we are in going to, to establish uh, emerging uh, technology as subject community or department, and we are considering to have health tech, agri tech, edu edu tech, and uh, the other, the IoT as well. And also uh, my colleagues, Chris. Uh, uh, Gold, he's uh, head of department, engineering department within the school as well. He's here. So we're going to learn from you, Paul. Uh, thanks for uh, agreeing to give a talk in our uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, I will ask the audience if you have any question, please either you can drop it in the chat area or after Paul's talk, we raise your hand. We can give you time to. Uh, ask your question. We are aiming to finish 1.30, but uh, never mind. I, I am, I'm happy to continue if that's help. Paul, thank you very much. You have that, uh, the mic. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Ali, and thanks a lot for asking me to give this opportunity about the, uh, the vast range and depth of support that is very largely free that DIT can offer. And um, I can just put my slides up. Um, hopefully, this can be seen OK. Yes, I can see it. That's great. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, um, hopefully um, I'm fairly qualified to talk because most of my career until last May when I actually joined the DIT, I've been involved with exports um, of, should we say, technical solutions, mainly aerospace and defence orientated, but some others as well in many and various parts of the world. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it, very largely. Uh, interesting challenges, difference, but this is just to um, hopefully educate that we exist anyway and what we can offer. And it can be so useful and helpful and save so many headaches and costs, frankly, uh, to anyone. And as I say, I've experienced it uh, from the other side in, in real business life. So, uh, yeah, 
what what are we really? Well, to be fair, the headquarters are in a very nice part of the old uh, Admiralty building and Horse Guards Parade. But our main purpose is to actively support UK firms, really SMEs, to export and work with our international partners. We're also involved with inward investment as well, but I won't touch on that just yet. And I don't think it's relevant and I'm not involved personally. But um, there's also, of course, the large policy um, of trying to strike as many free trade agreements, particularly after Brexit, which is now officially termed transition in government circles. And the global network, of course, of Department of um, International Trade Officers that I'm in touch with in um, some 108 countries, and there's um, almost 3000 of us in total to help you. So that gives you a feel of the scale. And in fact, also in this building, there's some cybersecurity exports team, um, both ex-defence and soccer, and those sort of uh, relationships and tie-ups. And I do workshops with them and other events. So please uh, keep in touch with our website, which I'll uh, explain shortly uh, and give details on. Uh, there's also other specialists in the advanced manufacturing team, as well as general international trade advisors, which I'll expand on briefly shortly. So the area I try and cover for tech and digital uh, SMEs, which is some 11,300 um, very roughly in the Midlands that we can uh, pinpoint, uh, but over 100 of those at least are cyber specialist companies, as well as some IT companies that do some cyber work. So that's the region that I'm principally involved with. To be honest, um, Gossage is on the cusp and often handled by Bristol, but exactly the same story. And of course, levelling up is big um, at the moment. And um, therefore, you know, there's a lot of resources and skills available, both Bristol in the south and west, in the Midlands and in the northern powerhouse, as well as the Midlands engine. Who am I and why am I here and perhaps qualified to talk to you? As was mentioned, I'm a chartered aerospace engineer, XRAF, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And then I've had some 30 years of international technical sales experience um, for both small and large companies and also some consultancy on my own for a few years more recently. So my job is to work for SMEs across the Midlands, um, but focus on the tech side and understand and articulate what they're offering around my colleagues in, so in other words, to message it around DIT and the other associated networks like the British Chambers of Commerce and some other companies like OCO Global that we work closely with. Um, so yes, I'm a sector specialist, as I say, I've been, it's quite a new idea in the last year or 18 months to have these sort of people um, to be able to do that and to focus the DIT support accordingly. Um, now, as was briefly mentioned, yes, the sort of subsectors that I'm involved with go anything from cyber and 5G through smart cities, Internet of Things, electrical systems, AI and big data, cloud and automation, uh, all these sort of things. So in recent sort of the last three or six months, I've been focusing on cyber and smart cities. Perhaps after the spring, it'll be more towards med tech, perhaps and AI and big data. But of course, you know, feel happy if you're in any of those areas. Um, hopefully I'm your man to at least help signpost you and um, get you off the ground initially. And uh, as I say, I try and match your company with the appropriate overseas markets, obviously working with you to the various opportunities that I hear of, both in general in various countries and regions, but also specific ones. And uh, in conjunction with a general international trade advisor that help companies both with business and export planning, but all the various events and courses you can go on, there's lots and lots of them and they're free um, and the various grants, which uh, I'll explain briefly in a minute as well, that are, that are also available to help. So there's a lot there. Now, when I first joined, I, I was given that, which uh, you know, rather led me, you know, what on earth do I do? And that's why really I focused on things. But as has been mentioned, I, you know, we try and cover tech and digital, but I'm not on my own. As I say, there's the general advisors and there's quite a few people in London also able to help. 
Um, but it certainly you know, keeps me nicely busy and challenging, but very rewarding as already some quite big deals in the early millions have been happening in Africa and Australasia, for example. So also, um, I um, overlap to a slight extent with another government department, the DCMS, Digital Education, Creative and Sports, because they are responsible for the 5G infrastructure in this country. Uh, as well as Industry 4.0 in general, and do some software development and uh, e-verification work. But really, it's the 5G backbone, um, which is my interaction with them and probably yourselves, as I say. So these are the sorts of industries um, and areas that we've got that are particularly strong in the Midlands. And the reason I mentioned some of those subsectors like medtech, uh, and in fact, gaming, although that's more consumer orientated and we do business to business very largely. So if there's a platform behind it, I'd be interested. But these are the strong areas um, of the Midlands. Um, and I would suggest Gloucestershire as well, because um, I'm actually based personally in the Herefordshire and Worcestershire Chamber, mainly the Worcester office if I'm around, as well as having one in Birmingham. So what I wanted to give you a feel of is the sorts of opportunities that even in my shortish time with the Department for International Trade I've been involved with just to give you a flavour. Now for example in Latin America and the Caribbean there's a big um, expo going on manufacturing tech we've got several companies um, going over either literally physically and and or hybrid uh, with that um, and there's a lot of people um, in the region going to that uh, it's in Monterey, in fact, but also it's might be worth mentioning, it slightly surprised me, Chile actually is about the most advanced um, in digital work in uh, that part of the world, in South America's. Ghana, I pointed some uh, general um, computer and uh, information companies at because a few months ago there's a lot of World Bank money going in and some of those opportunities are still going if you're interested. Nigeria, quite a lot of telecoms work, um, particularly about the infrastructure, the fibre broadband. They've got a lot of money, 600 odd million from uh, the states actually in a grant as well there to improve it. I mean, a big country, 200 million people. And there's a you know small to medium sized Birmingham company that's just literally in the last few days and I've helped with the press release get the um, cyber contract for three to five years worth between about one and one and a half million pounds. In South Africa as well, there's data center opportunities. There's also one in Nigeria. Um, and um, there's a lot of activity in that, um, in fact, going on in America. Uh, a lot of it associated to American money. They're trying to dominate, but we're assisting to a large extent, but trying to supply the infrastructure. Uh, and it's a very new, neat data center solution which doesn't need people wandering inside, is a lot greener and smaller and quicker to install and buy, etc. With uh, Turkey um, as well, there's a lot of activity. Um, there's a major event towards the end of the year, but there's a lot of smart traffic um, from the EV world, but traffic systems, um, be it for the traffic lights and car parking and everything um interacting uh together in a central app or place and they're very much into industry 4.0 as it's now been termed the modern robotic largely automation of things and um of course the asia pacific has always and is still very much high tech and still needs more very hungry for it pretty well across the board and a lot of smart cities more recently happening in thailand Malaysia and the Philippines, as well as Singapore itself, which is really the main hub and entry into that part of the world, which includes Australasia and Japan, as far as we're concerned. As I say, there's a lot of people to help in sort of my opposite numbers, should we say, that do the similar job actually in country to advise and support you. All free. And um, yeah, with America, there's a lot of SaaS cloud computing um, opportunities as well as cyber. That's partly with the five I agreements, the major governments of obviously Australia, Canada, um, America, New Zealand and ourselves. 
as I say, yes, there's a lot of cyber work therefore in those other parts of the five eye as well, potentially available. Uh, please give me a shout. I'll leave my details at the end. Denmark, by the way, I've got quite a lot of involvement with. Um, you know, smallest population, it's about six million, but very easy to do business with, very pleasantly direct, um, and probably the most digital country, certainly in Europe, if not the world. I mean, everything is um, soft, <laughs> should we say, not hard copy. And they've just got a new dynamic public purchasing portal, which next month there's an event on as well. Um, by the way, all these sort of things are in great.gov.uk. It's be at the end as well, but the home page for that is hopefully quite useful uh, as an overall guide. So how can I help? As I say, by understanding a company's product and servicing with my engineering um, background and message that around, help you to plan and focus on certain countries or regions which you might for various misconception reasons not have either realized or think is more difficult than it actually is. I found so there's less competition in many parts of the world. There's other factors come into play which you might not be thinking of. And from both our experience, mine and general advisors, these ITAs, there's also an Export Academy, that's the EA advisor for very early on and very small organizations and companies as well to help there. So um, we will then help you um, plan to go to those regions. And um, as well, we've got cultural advisors also to help you with specific um, issues potentially in that country, just to keep you aware and give you that advantage and save you a lot of time, money and research. So yes, it's to highlight the trends to these companies, as I say, around the world and the various intermediaries with due respect like C11, but a lot of the other innovation alliances and clusters around the country, and of course, industry itself. Um, I have various newsletters. Um, if you're sort of start to get involved with DIT, that you can be on the distribution list for, as well as all the events and specific opportunities. And obviously, meetings with my sector contacts in the other country where I spent probably about a third of my time involved with, um, which can uh, cut through a lot of uh, planning and worry and a lot of help and signposting within the country or region concerned of interest. So uh, yes, so hopefully get you some new customers is the uh, idea and therefore, as was mentioned earlier, some export wins uh, as we call them. In other words, trade for the UK, but in particular for that business. Uh, so how does DIT help and in what way? As I say, there's the various advisors that are general to give the, um, the events, the um, export advice and the planning, and then put you in touch with specialists such as myself. There are also people like myself who specialise in automotive, clean growth, um, financial and professional services, including legal, uh, automotive, and um, also e-commerce. So, uh, yeah, and of course, we've also got those people similarly mirrored overseas. And we've also got overseas champions now, um, which connect the Midlands people. So they focus on the Midlands in that region, which are in basically the main continents of the world. Um, so what they will help you to do is any market research, but also finding actual context. And we'll actually, if you like, contact them for you to a point for two or three hours worth just after that. There is a tiny charge of some 50 or 60 pound an hour, but very worthwhile if you want them to go really in depth. By the way, on the cyber side, the DSC defence and security export side in London, the old DSA is still in Victoria Street and part of BEIS is still there and they have three or four people who have a vast amount of market intelligence and that's where our cyber side is uh, centered basically so uh, i can link you up there if you would like as i say it's planning the routes to market as well whether you want to do it via an agent have a partner in country a distributor or whatever and try and advise and support you uh, basically there I say there's language and cultural advice and also money to make your website more friendly to that particular market as well as translate. 
um, some parts of it. They say there's advice as well on overseas partnerships, which goes quite deep and legal from someone who's spent well over 20 years as a senior commercial director in industry, uh, is now actually located in Coventry University. And we have a law firm around about five sort of more complicated markets of the world that can help with things like IP or setting up in that country. And um, that is also free, certainly for the first two or three hours at least, to give you a good feel as to whether to commit more. As of course, as I say, I'm connected to a chamber and most of us are. So export documentation, the shipping options, all the, the basic, the core admin necessary things these days as well, we have uh, support there for you. Um, as I say, there's e-commerce, there's digital marketing and website advice. Uh, lots of events that you can find on that great.gov.uk website. Uh, there's also some mention, but I think the first is more useful, is a gov.uk forward slash DIT. I'll put that in the chat shortly. But there's also overseas exhibition support because we have missions, well, did do pre-COVID and hope there's a few starting again soon. I've got one from India, uh, hopefully next month, and I'm going to Birmingham and Morven, for example, with them. But um, there's also help to go to overseas shows um, and that and that's matched funding normally up to uh, so it's 50 percent and at least usable three times over. There's also a thing called the Internationalisation Fund or ESIF, which is up to £9,000 of match funding for almost anything. As I say from your website, you could use it for exhibition support as well if your exhibition isn't covered by the uh, previous um, option. Uh, but that is a one-off thing, so it's very important just to focus and get as much out of that as you can, because it's a once-off in the company's life, so try and maximise if ever you go down that road. Also, of course, we have a lot of financial um, support and advice, um, and a big part of our organisation is called UK for UK Export and Finance. And they offer guarantees and insurance um, of your export deal. And that's up to 90% uh, um, insurance of your goods um, or services sometimes to some extent, but also guaranteeing at least 80% of your payment for a very small levy and a lot of peace of mind. Uh, we also have a finder supplier database, which you can get to from the great Gov UK, which is very worthwhile just putting a brief company profile on your um, on there. And are there are people overseas or people using our services that want your your products or services will hopefully link up with you. It's also similarly a finder buyer the other way around. We also have quite a lot of events, obviously more and more virtual at the moment, but still but a lot of meet the buyers, and these are major buyers in various countries and parts of the world, and or export experts in that um, to talk um, with you at various uh, seminars, et cetera, or symposiums, as was mentioned earlier. So yes, therefore you can get access to real live, actual current business opportunities. And at last site, there was almost 20,000 on our website and that was those that are posted there, apart from the fact that people know about in post or people like myself in the UK are aware of. Uh, there's also an export um, support service, which was principally aimed at the EU post Brexit to help people with documentation both ways. But we've also in the various continents of the world got very recently started regional market entry hubs, which help filter if you're not sure which country within that region you'd be best suited, they help you, they filter your application basically and give initial support. So as I say, there's this vast overseas network, but what I found absolutely amazing and rather interesting, and it is a government statistic, but the first time of an exporter engaging with DIT, they improve their productivity, which means profitability or turnover, but on average 39% in their first year, which I think is quite something, and that's an average. So well worthwhile, I suggest if you're thinking about it at all, and you're you know ready to and able and suitable for export in whatever way, 
uh, we're here to help, as I say. And if you don't directly need these sort of services, please pass the uh, word around and my details uh, very freely. As I say, we're in 108 different countries um, and that effectively markets of the world, and we've got 174 actual physical locations within it uh, and almost 3,000 staff. So here I am. Feel free to link up on LinkedIn with me. Um, top left are those two websites uh, and bottom right are my details. But um, that's a very truncated view um, of quite a lot of advice, support and intelligence that's available. But, uh, you know, I couldn't recommend it enough. I certainly enjoy my export journey and um, thoroughly enjoyed the support, which uh, gave me a lot of peace of mind and also more business. And uh, thank you, Ali. Um, please, I think I'll leave it there and uh, ask if there's anyone would like to ask some questions. Thank you very much, uh, Paul. It's really uh, informative and uh, rich uh, information for us, at least as a university, because uh, I have uh, some questions, but I would like to open the door for, for colleagues and uh, the audience to ask their question, but uh, really informative and really it's a great effort you do that 39% is not an easy and initially with uh, profits, uh, your, your growth and for the first year. And also um, I, I was uh, discussing with you about your job. Uh, it's really hard. You have to be all over the globe and uh, people can measure your performance easily, whether how much you mix a successful business. So uh, I can see that uh, some uh, hands there. I have uh, first hand uh, Chris and then Kamal. OK, so thank you, Paul, for giving an overview of what you do there. Um, I know this is focused on cyber, but I'm quite interested in the engineering parts because you mentioned quite a lot of things that we do. So electrical systems, smart cities, automation, industry 4.0, railways, things like that. Is our best way to engage with you on the engineering side more of a knowledge transfer type of activity? So where our research comes out with some sort of you know, physical product or something that we can effectively then distribute to overseas markets and things like that. Is that how you see us interfacing into you? Or Rather than on a teaching level, it's more on the research and enterprise knowledge transfer level. Sorry, Chris, can, can you just expand as to who who we is? Sorry, who you're representing? Oh, sorry. Your pardon. So I, I should know. I've seen you before, but um, sorry. So um, I'm academic subject lead for engineering technologies. So right. a couple of sorts of engineering, and obviously we can engage on a teaching perspective or yeah. looking at activities there. But I think from your description, it's more the research, the enterprise and knowledge transfer activities, which fit quite well with what you're doing in finding markets for it. So yes. some of the research that I do is you know, energy harvesting and I think power electronics, and that fits reasonably well, thermal electricity in smart cities for yeah. powers on Internet of Things items and things like that. Um, electrical systems and also looking at railway de-icing and things like that. So is our correct way to engage with you to sort of um, talk to you about that, look for partners to work with funding opportunities in that area? Is that how it you would be? I think it would be mutually very beneficial, definitely, um, particularly me initially. I also have an advanced manufacturing and automotive colleagues as well that I think would probably be very interested. And basically, it's really like a very active network. We would then, you know, um, use whatever information you can um, give us to, to, to promote your um, services, you know, whatever you wanted to push in whatever part of the world. But equally, when I'm talking to both UK clients, um, you know, on the supply side, but similarly um, overseas, um, they need a lot of specialist knowledge um, and capabilities, and I'm sure there's possibility there. We also have an education specialist who's based in the East Midlands I can give you some information about, which is the other perhaps uh, sort of branch of the tree, shall we say. But please, Chris, send us an email or link up with me and we'll, um, we can do some more, definitely. So yeah, sort of form a more formal partnership really to try and, uh, as you say, encourage uh, that trade because basically GDP of the UK accounts for about 4% of the world. So there's a lot out there to be uh, utilised. So thanks for your interest. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. I will do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Uh, sorry, Chris, I did introduce you at the beginning, uh, but uh, it's my fault. I should have asked you, Paul, probably it just uh, 
for us, it's a, it's a, it's a new faces. But uh, yes, uh, my colleague Chris, he's the uh, equivalent to the head of department of the engineering department and uh, uh, doing uh, some a lot of research in this area. I, uh, to be honest, that was one of my questions. Thank you, Chris, for asking that. It's not necessarily your fault, Ali. I was hiding in the background, but I'm <laughs> next time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Good to meet you. All the best. Uh, we have Kamal, head of uh, head of the School uh, of Computing and Engineering. Kamal. Please. Thanks, Ali, and thanks, Paul, for a very informative uh, presentation and uh, an impressive portfolio in terms of activities that you cover. And we're hoping that we will benefit from your experience and uh, we will be able to forge a partnership with yourself that will be mutually beneficial. Uh, Two things, or maybe three. There is a question, Paul, which you don't have to answer now, uh, but I will answer it. I will ask it uh, publicly, and then I'll leave you to think about the answer. And there are a couple of pieces of information uh, advice. Uh, one is to do. You mentioned leveling up in your uh, introduction, and the university has secured uh, some funding through the leveling up initiative. Uh, as part of the uh, city centre regeneration, Gloucester. So we've got something in the region of £10 million pounds to uh, refit uh, the old Debenhams building into a city centre, into uh, a campus, which we will call a city campus. How is this relevant to this, to this conversation? The School of Health from the university will be moving, hopefully, if all is going as planned, will be moving from the Roxtall's um, location now to the city centre uh, from September 23, followed a year later, phase two, by the School of Education. The School of Computing and Engineering will be staying at the Park Campus in Cheltenham. However, part of the levelling up, we're also uh, partnering with the, the Reef uh, Group and particularly the Forge, who will be setting up a cybersecurity facility with uh, incubation unit, business support, and uh, access, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we're working with uh, the Forge and Sinam to look at how we use digital to reinforce a strength that the county has in health and health technologies. And we are, our ambition is to create um, a very advanced simulation platform um, within the Forge, working with the Forge and uh, Sinan, which will be, probably will have three components. One component is the, um, the unseen, what I call the unseen component. This is the data science, the AI, the cybersecurity stuff, which is in the background, making sure that the data is used for the best um, output as far as uh, um, patients are concerned. Then there is a simulation side to it, component number two, where practitioners are using digital twins or other forms to uh, uh, practice on uh, fairly uh, complicated and sensitive operations. And the third one, which I think is more relevant to this conversation, is more cultural. So how do we enable citizens, the public, members of the public community, to come through the building and experience some of this stuff? And we haven't yet worked out exactly what that experience would look like, but we want, the, we want to take the public with us. Right. There is a strong um, belief that amongst the three leading nations as far as cybersecurity is concerned, yes, Israel and the US could be ahead in certain areas, um, and then we are probably third in certain areas. One particular area we are ahead of these two nations is the cultural element, because we take the public with us. And I think we want to reinforce that element in all our handling of the technology and what we are trying to do. And hopefully that's something we can work with you on in your uh, international uh, portfolio. Uh, the second one um, 
so if if we're talking about the uh, the leveling up, Riel mentioned um, the symposium, which will be taking place sometime in in um, uh, July, I think 10th of July. You may or may not know, Paul, that we've set up a cyber security and digital innovation center in Duren, in Germany. And although I'm talking to my colleagues in the Golden Valley, Sinem, et cetera, how do we make the most of that corporation in terms of having an impact on the business community in the county? So how do we create those links? And I may need to have chats with you about how do we maximize the impact on our own community here? Yes, we're doing work in Germany, uh, and we're being paid for that, which is great. Is there a way to bring that into the county and to the UK PLC? The final question, sorry, Ali, I'm taking a lot of time of this platform. The final question, and you don't have to answer that here, Paul, uh, maybe an, an email later on. We have been courted by uh, an organization called 3CRDC. Or, uh, okay, it's the Three County Regional Defense and Security Cluster, um, which is a group of people who have a lot of goodwill to do great things of bringing businesses and communities together. Cyber is an element, but it's defense and security more than cyber. Cyber is just one of those elements. And given your role and given their links with the MOD, I was wondering whether you know about them. Do you know of similar organizations? Are we, you know, are we doing the right thing with this kind of uh, clusters where the aim really is to, um, you know, make sure that we're, it's all connected rather than piecemeal, everyone is doing their own thing. So um, that that's a question for another day to answer, Paul, but I thought I'd mention it because otherwise I'll forget it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, there, uh, Professor, because um, obviously my background is aerospace and defence anyway, so I wear that hat even within DIT quite often. And um, I think, yes, we can hopefully communicate in more detail over several times, uh, all being well, you know, in the very near future. But in brief, as an overview and for our audience, I would suggest that Firstly, um, on the um, Debenhams, um, you know, sort of uh, city campus idea, um, which I think is fantastic uh, in lots of ways. And we're all wondering what should happen to our old retail space, so <laughs> being put to good use. Um, but in particular, um, talking to people like myself, and I can message that around DIT, we can obviously advise all the clients. So for your resources, you could have people wanting wanting them in the first place but you could have people being sent as well to be trained up perhaps or whatever you're envisaging um, that's the first part I think you hit on a very useful topic on expanding area and it's probably my next main priority focus is health or med tech um, because of there is so much potential there um, for the good as well and um, there are particular companies that I know of that perhaps could be useful to yourself. And I could also, as I say again, out of the information of your resources um, and you know what you can offer, I can message back there. It's just a variation of what I'm doing at the moment. Um, in fact, uh, my general work, really. So, no, very happy to help with that. And you talked about um, a similar-ish, perhaps, uh, set up in Germany and for example, um, we do actually do a lot because Germany, as you might know, operate by the states, but they all their businesses have to be with the Chamber of Commerce, which links into the way we operate over here quite well. And there are parts of Germany and there's Hessen, for example, which is the main mine Frankfurt area uh, coming over here um, in the next month, but several other times into Birmingham actually centred. Um, but events like that, if you keep in touch with me, I can try and remind you, but keep an eye on our website. But to link you up both with those parts of Germany, but in particular the area you are, uh, is a company called OCO Global that partners for Germany. And I think to link you up with them would be very useful from both points of view. Um, 
So uh, yeah, definitely. And finally, the cluster. I had heard about them. I don't know if it's a spin-off or part of the Three Counties Defence and Security Group, which, fair enough, in a past life I was involved with when they started back in 2014 through the local solicitors, actually. Um, uh, Harrison Clark Swickby's um, and uh, yeah no they're very proactive and helpful because they've got a lot of clients particularly to go towards the Welsh border and special forces influenced but the big big thing you have in setting up the cyber city is the link to GCHQ and just the general um, acknowledgement and globally you mentioned about America Israel certainly with respect are very good in cyber security some parts I think America are better some parts perhaps we can boast a little bit. Let's not argue about that. There's a big problem going up exponentially in the world. And I could have given boring slides about the stats, but it goes into trillions now and liable to go up sixfold in the next few years by 25. So uh, please, um, yeah, we'll keep in touch and talk more. But thank you very much for your points there, uh, Kamal. Take care. Thank you very much, uh, Kamal. Thanks, Paul, for the answers. Really useful to know. I cannot see any hand or any question, but I have a question would like to ask about uh, uh, as a as a university. Do you have any, any example to share with us that what other university uh, or how they can use your services? Because, for example, we do offer uh, CPD courses. We do offer boot. Uh, we can do boot camps as well nationally, internationally, uh, of course, plus the other business we do, research and uh, education, undergraduate, postgraduate. But I would like to know how can we as a university can uh, benefit from your services, please? No, certainly. Um, it's slightly similar to what I was just mentioning before to uh, Kamal, but I think um, at the moment, we deal with quite a few universities um, that are generally doing um, cohort programs in certain areas and want you know companies to send them people um, to get some specialist knowledge and often bring industry in to actually lecture or mentor those sort of people. Um, in particular, around Birmingham and Malvern with the 5G test bed as well, there's things you know, linked up there. Um, but I think, um, funny enough, I'm going to Aston University this afternoon later on as a tech showcase. So, you know, we try and link up with various types of things, be it your actual programmes. And I bless you, you know, I was very lucky to be at your recent uh, boot camp uh, promotion. And I'm glad to hear the first lot are starting to come through. Very useful um, and practical. And um, I think it's just, yes, keeping the words across, but it is really making sure and it's as much us keeping in touch with you as the other way around. I would suggest like any relationship, you know, use and abuse us because we do have quite a bit on our plate, to be honest, but I work quite long days and I'm, you know, I enjoy it. I'm really conscientious, but if I can't help directly, other people will. Um, but it's getting yourselves known um to the general itas which is through the chambers of commerce actually is a big marketing link i would suggest for you there so uh, you use that as well um, and it would benefit okay. uh, them thank as well you. thank you very much sort of answer you hopefully but uh, yeah it's, it's networking really <laughs> as much as anything else in it's not the information flair thank you thank you uh i i still we have time if you have any question otherwise there will be 10 minutes free time to have a coffee uh, for you. Uh, all right, uh, please uh, join me and uh, thanks uh, uh, Paul for the informative uh, sp uh, talk and I really uh, enjoyed it. I have the slide. I am happy to share it. I will send it to Riel. Riel is going to share it with the with the so thank you very much and uh, we're looking forward to work with you, Paul, uh, in the near future, please. We will be in touch and thanks colleagues for joining us and have a nice uh, day. Thank you, Ryan, everyone. Really looking forward to working with you all as well. Thank you, Paul. All, all the best. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.